Welcome to Rockingham, and we're back for another ride. This is the place to call home for racing as the popularity of NASCAR continues to grow. The Fox family of networks proud to present another season of high-speed excitement. The fourth year of FX's coverage of NASCAR racing begins right now from the North Carolina Speedway known with affection and anger as The Rock. for the NASCAR Busch Series pre-race show on FX and the start of what should be a wild weekend of racing here in Rockingham. Terrific weather to get things going. But first, last week, Nextel Cup. Now, Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the ride of his life as he wins the Daytona 500 and only his fifth try. In fact, a big week of winning the Busch race, a twin 125, and first time that Jr. has ever led in the Cup points race. But Dale Jr. has never finished in the top 10 at The Rock. With a win Sunday, his name will go on The Rock, located just outside the racetrack where all the winners go who make it through Rockingham. And Rockingham, the town located in the sand hills of southeastern North Carolina. And for two days, this sparsely settled area will be a loud a roar of motors and the screams of thousands of fans that will be noisy and hopping the place to be. Of course, the fans demand the Hollywood Hotel be parked at trackside overlooking the start-finish line as we go to where the races are to bring you just a little bit closer to the action on the pre-race show. Hi, and welcome. I'm Chris Myers. I'm good to be back in the driver's seat as we crank it up and are ready to get going. And from the headliners like Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, to drivers out to make a name for themselves like Kyle Busch, Johnny Sauter, and Martin Truex Jr. And from now into July, if there's next L Cup or Busch Series action in the garage, the pits are on the track, we're here to bring it to you. And joined, as always, the former crew chief, sidekick, Mr. Fixit, Mr. Goodwrench, Jeff Hammond. Nice to see you again. Hey, man. Good to ready see to you. Go. Oh, man. Ready Ready to go. Been working out again yes, in the offseason. Yes, sir. Gotta get ready to go. Okay, now you always talk about uh, this level of the fittest. Right? Uh huh. No, 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 Chris. No? This time, survival of the smartest. Oh, well, that leaves us out. <laughs> well, uh, but the thing is, it brings in these drivers because they've got to be smarter today. If you want to have a good run here today, folks, you're going to have to be using your head as well as your foot because saving tires and making sure you don't overuse those tires too soon is going to be the key. All right, we know about the cup changes in the Bush series, some changes, but a little more subtle. Racing. I, I think it's going to make it better in some ways, Chris, but what they've done this year with the Bush cars, they've added 100 pounds and made them weigh the same thing as a uh, Nextel Cup car, which is 3,400 pounds. But we talk about the rear spoiler and the Cup division. Well, this time, instead of taking three quarters of an inch off the back of the spoiler, the Bush Series guys only took a quarter of an inch. So the changes as far as the aero balance were very subtle. A lot of the guys said they couldn't even really tell it. So it should be a real interesting race as far as that idea is concerned because a lot of these teams are really have been doing their homework with these short tracks such as Bobby Hamilton Jr., he's really looking forward to coming back here. All right, and, and the points race, as we get an early jump, this is the second Bush race, the championship battle underway after the season opening race at Daytona. Uh, Junior in the lead. Johnny Benson's name not even listed. Now, he came in 41st last week, but on Friday, he had actually the fastest car during qualifying, so he is on the pole, wins his first pole, really, in the Bush series, and that earns him a visit with our Dick Bergman. Dick? Uh, that's the good part of the story, Chris. The rest of the story is that after the time trials were all done and over, NASCAR pulled the car apart and discovered that the right front spring in Johnny Benson's car didn't exactly meet the letter of the law. And as a result, instead of starting on the inside of the front row this afternoon, Johnny is going to start dead last. Well, <laughs> you got a lot of cars to pass. Are you going to charge or are you going to try to pick them off one at a time? Well, it would be nice if we could pick off ten at a time, but I'm not sure if we can do that. I mean, 
guys on the yellow dot just do a tremendous job, and this is something that, you know, is we're more worried about that rule when they're four or five hundred pound springs, not 13, 1400 pound springs. So, just something that got by us, and uh, we'll have to start from the back. But I'm still looking forward to it. A um, little more pressure today than there was maybe starting up front, but we'll start the back, see what happens. He's got a great car. That car won both of the races here last year at the Rock with Jeremy, our. Uh, McMurray driving it. Let's go to Chris. Right, yeah. And we're going to talk with uh, Jamie McMurray. Thanks, yeah. uh, Dick. And Johnny, boy, fame is, is fleeting, right? As uh, Johnny I'm finds telling out. you right now, this is something that you really don't need to have happen because of the fact that all of a sudden you're feeling so good. Everybody's going through the garage area giving you congratulations about winning your first poll, and all of a sudden something like this jumps up and gets your, kind of like, get your focus off of what has happened. A lot of people now are probably going to look and say Johnny Benson didn't really earn that situation yesterday. So could have an effect the way these guys kind of enter the race, but I look for Johnny and that whole crew to kind of rally around it and say, well, if we come back and win the race, we'll disprove what anybody said about it. Yeah, Benson uh, is a racing veteran. Today he'll do battle with some of the young upcoming stars that we mentioned in the Bush Series, including 18-year-old Kyle Bush, the younger brother right. of Nextel Cup driver Kurt Bush, of course, and Steve Burns with the rookie driver. Steve? And Chris Kyle is the latest version, NASCAR's version of the Can't Miss Kid. The year you were born, Daryl Waltrip won his last championship. That doesn't seem possible, but you step into a ride with Hendrick Motorsports, a team that won the championship last year with Brian Vickers. Kyle, does that give you more confidence or more pressure, and why? Well, it gives you a lot of pressure, but as well as it also gives me a lot of confidence in the team. That it, I know that I'm with a great organization, of course, with Hendrick Motorsports, and I got the opportunity to be out here racing for the best with a sponsor of Lowe's, and Gladiator Garage Works on board with us this week. So, you know, we're really looking forward to the rest of the year, so hopefully we can just come out of some of these races with a good, strong finish, try not to get mixed up in anything, and have a good run for the end of the year. Making just his eighth career start, and he will roll off 14th. Thanks, Steve. Boy, Kyle really does look young. Uh, speaking of young, in addition to Kyle, two other rookies in today's race from Wisconsin. Paul Menard, who starts one row behind Kyle, and Donnie Neuenberger, who's from Maryland, whose hobby is rescuing greyhounds. I'm not sure if it's the, uh, you know, the dog of the bus, but it's a nice thing to do anyway. And Jamie McMurray, who Dick Bertrand mentioned was the winner last year, has a streak going for his fourth straight Bush win at The Rock. And we'll see if Jamie will spill some secrets when we come back. We're live from The Rock here on FX. FX welcoming you back to Bush Series Racing here on FX. And of course, with the realignment, Rockingham losing its fall race date. So this weekend is the only weekend of NASCAR racing this year from Rockingham, North Carolina. Back with Jeff Hammond here in the Hollywood Hotel. And it's Paul Menard, the rookie. He's a rookie starting 15th. I want to make sure I get his name right. Exactly. Ho hopefully we'll be saying it a lot, saying a lot about the, him. the Bush season. <laughs> and, and unlike the, the Nextel Cup, uh, no major change in the points. I mean, you get five bonus points for the win, but there's no 10 race uh, shootout late at the end of the season. How will that affect, since it's similar to last year, but it certainly can juggle things in terms of winning races. It could be just maybe a little bit, Chris, but right now we need to be looking at what the overall situation was last year. We had a great point race last year. It wasn't settled to the final race, but this year the biggest difference is the winner will get an extra five points. In years past, a guy hypothetically could win the race. The gentleman behind him could run second, lead the most laps, and have a tie. So NASCAR decided we need to give the winner just a little bit more. So they stuck five points up there for him this year. The guy who always gets his points, Jamie McMurray, going for four in a row here at the Rock. Okay, Matt. Jamie Murray swept both Bush Series races here last year with the car Johnny Benson put on the pole. Now that car was fast from the get-go but faded near the end of the run. How is your car you're going to have today? It's pretty much the opposite. It doesn't seem to want to go um, on low air pressure or on fresh tires, but it stays pretty consistent throughout the run. So I'm hoping today they've had a caution with like 20 laps to go the last couple, last two races. So I'm hoping today it, it'll run on out. Now you're chasing a big record. It may not rank as high as your first next hook up win, but four in a row. Yeah, I think mean, it'd be huge. Uh, Mark Martin's so good here. I mean, he's been so good so long. So to be able to just be tied with him, that would be, uh, be huge. He's won here from second, third, and eighth. He'll try to make it four from the seventh position. Thanks, Matt. Uh, off to the introductions for the fans here. And Jamie McMurray obviously uh, looking for big things in the Cup Series and trying to accomplish something here. Mark Martin owning the record. He referred to Mark four straight Bush Series wins. Well, Chris, I think what you're looking here today is you, a driver right now who has a love of a racetrack. He understands where all the little corners are. He knows where the breaking points are. He knows where to pick. When you get in that zone and get in that rhythm, know where all the humps and bumps are, you go like a bat, and that's what he's been doing the last three times. All right, going like a bat, time to bring in uh, Daryl Waltrip, who's won here four times. He right? knows how to yeah. get around here, don't you, D.W.? He knows how to get around. A lot, of, a lot talked about with the track and tire. Uh, D.W., what should we look for today? Well, it's kind of interesting if you think about it. Uh, is it Jamie or was it the car? 
because his car that he drove last year is on the pole. And, of course, he's right there with him. But uh, So we got to watch that to see if Jamie was really as good as Jamie is or was it really the car. But as Jeff said, it's about some racetracks fit your driving style. This place slimy, you get to slipping around, sliding around, and the cat that can just ease that gas pedal down and keep those rear tires from breaking loose and getting that good forward launch off the corner, that's the guy that's going to run good here today. Jamie seems to really, this track seems to suit his particular driving style, so I think he's still going to be the man to beat, I believe, before the day's over with. Driver feedback, always important with the crew chief. I, mm -hmm. I know when I was in the garage, some of the, the crew chief and drivers were discussing that, Daryl. How is that the case here, especially with someone who has experience of doing what you just talked about? Well, you know, you take Jamie, he's, he's, he's still pretty young, you know, and he doesn't have a lot of experience. But again, I just refer back to that rhythm thing, that going down there, you hear that engine at the right, it just it hits that right peak, and you turn that into the corner, and you get that left wheel right where it needs to be, and you've got the finesse to pick the throttle up and drive up off the corner smooth. Being smooth is what pays off on long runs on these tires. All right, Darrell, thanks. Uh, we'll join you in a moment with uh, Mike Joy and also uh, Larry McReynolds getting ready to call the race. FX, our first uh, push race of the season. I'm excited. Yes, you get a look at some of the drivers getting ready. We'll be back here live in just a moment.